today we're going to talk about energy management. Oh yeah. Energy management is simply managing your energy in such a way that allows you to have a safe auto rotation landing in the event of an engine failure. <sighs> in normal flight, the engine supplies energy to the rotor disc and the rotor disc produces lift to maintain flight. In this case, air is forced through the rotor disc. In the case of an engine failure, the engine is no longer supplying energy to the rotor disc and an auto rotation must be entered. Yep. In an auto rotation, as the helicopter descends, air is forced upward through the rotor disc. This creates the aerodynamic forces that power the rotor disc and the energy to accomplish this comes from stored energy. So where is this stored energy? Well, it turns out that there are three places we can store energy. There's kinetic energy, which is half the mass times the velocity squared. This can come from the forward speed of the helicopter as well as the rotating rotor disc itself. Additionally, there is potential energy, which is simply energy based on your height. The higher you are, the more energy there is. We'll take a look at each of these in some more detail so they make a little bit more sense. The forward speed of the helicopter, kinetic energy. More speed means more energy. 65 knots contains a pretty good amount of energy to fly with. We also have energy stored in the rotor disc, often this is called your rotor inertia. Small amount of energy is contained in the rotor disc. RPMs must be maintained or blade stall will occur, and blade stall is non-recoverable. And of course, potential energy, your energy due to height. The higher you are, the more energy you have. Here's an example at 500 feet. Pilot actually has control over all three of these energy sources by choosing where to fly and how fast to fly. Let's take a look at an example of a pilot flying at 65 knots and 500 feet. Now, if you take a look here, I've made these sort of buckets of energy. So there's energy due to height, energy due to speed, and energy due to your RPMs. So in the case of an auto rotation, you must maintain your RPMs in order to have a safe landing. So here we have an engine failure, and as we descend, the air is coming up through the rotor disc, which allows energy from the height bucket to maintain our RPMs. So I'm going to go ahead and slow this animation for a moment just to point something out. As we get closer to the ground, we can slow down our speed. When we're in the flare and slowing down our speed, that energy from our speed is now captured by the rotor disc. So now at the very end of our auto rotation, we are now going to use the energy to have a nice, soft, gentle landing and touchdown. Yay! Now let's take a look at another example, zero knots and 500 feet. So let me pause this for a moment. In this case, we have that same amount of energy due to our height again. However, we do not have the speed that we used in the last example that allowed us to have a soft landing at the end. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to gradually speed up. Now because we started with no energy due to speed, this energy is going to have to come from somewhere. So the energy from the height bucket is going to be given to both the speed and the RPM bucket so that way we can maintain our RPMs but also pick up some speed. So as you can see here height is both giving us speed and RPMs. Now that that speed bucket is filled up enough with energy we're sort of in a similar situation to where we were in the last animation where we're giving up our height to maintain our RPMs and we have a reasonable speed moving forward. As we get closer to the ground, once again, like in the last animation, our speed is used to maintain our RPMs, and at the end, once again, we use those RPMs to cushion our landing and have a nice soft landing. You may notice in this case that we ended up landing in the grass instead of landing on the taxiway, like in the last example. This is simply because we didn't have as much energy to start with, so we were not able to make it as far. However, we were still able to have a nice soft landing. Yay! Now let's take a look at another example, zero knots and 100 feet. Okay, so now before we go ahead and play this animation, take a look here. We have no speed energy, we have very limited height energy, and we currently have our RPMs just before the engine fails. As the helicopter is descending, there's an attempt to maybe speed up a little bit 
However, there's not enough time or energy in your height to get that speed going. As a result, by the time the ground, by the time the helicopter makes contact with the ground, there simply isn't enough energy to have a nice soft landing. As a result, the landing isn't so pretty. So let's go ahead and take a look at the R22's height velocity diagram. Now the height velocity diagram shows height and velocity combinations that are not recommended if you want to be able to have a safe auto rotation landing. The shaded areas represent areas you want to avoid. And in one of the shaded areas, the lower one down here, it indicates sea level and 1300 pounds. In the other case, it indicates 7,000 feet density altitude and 1,300 pounds. As you can see, at higher density altitudes, the shaded region gets larger. The HV diagram can be found on page 511 of your R22 POH. In the first example, we looked at 500 feet and 65 knots. If we draw this dot on the diagram, we can see it's outside of the shaded region. In the second example, we looked at 500 feet and 0 knots. And as we can see, for sea level conditions, this is still outside of the shaded area. However, in the case of 100 feet and 0 knots, we can see this is clearly in the shaded region of the HV diagram. But the area to fly in to have a safe auto rotation is also going to be dependent on pilot experience. For example, a Robinson test pilot will be able to have an easier time auto rotating than a brand new 50 hour private pilot.